In this tutorial, we'll model a simple shopping cart like this, from a cube object in Blender. You can use this cart in an e-commerce website, or in any animation video. We'll cover the design, some basic materials, and the movement part. We will also discuss how to attach wheels to the cart, and make them rotate automatically, as the cart moves along a particular direction. And we'll use a driver for that purpose, which is very interesting. So let us start with a blank new file. We'll edit this default cube and create our shopping cart in under 15 minutes. First, go to the edit mode and turn on the vertex selection. Then select one edge of the cube like this. We'll move it this way. So press G on your keyboard to grab and then press X to lock it in the X dimension. Type minus 0.5 and enter. And similarly, we need to move this edge on the other side, in this direction. So press G, then X, then type 0.5 and enter. Now we would like to extrude this edge, in this way, in order to create the handle part of our cart. So press E, and move your mouse slightly in this way. We can fine-tune this accurately, in this operator box. Let us change this X value to 0.1. The Y value should be 0. And we can enter point 3 in the Z value. We need to then extrude it again in this way. So press E, and this time make it little more slant. Let us fine tune this, so enter point 5 in the X, the Y value should be 0. And Z should be just point 2. There is nothing specific about these values, you can use whatever looks good in your eyes. Next, we need to add some bevel to this part. So select this edge, and pick up the bevel tool from here. Then move this yellow handle to add some bevel to this edge. We can fine-tune the values again from this operator box. The width type can be offset. The amount should be 0.25. And we'll go with, say, 10 segments. That will add some nice bevel effect as we wanted. But we actually don't need all these edges. We just need the outline, or the edges like this, to create a handle for our cart. So deselect everything and select only these edges inside this part. Now hit X on your keyboard to bring this delete menu, and select edges from here. So everything will be removed, except this outline, later we'll create a cart handle from this single edge loop. Now enable the face selection mode and select this top face. Again hit X, and select faces to remove this top surface. We are done with the first step, to convert it into a shopping cart. We'll now add some loop cuts in order to create few sections on this cube. So select the loop cut tool, and add a loop cut along the width of the cube. Let us then open this operator box and change the number of cuts to 6. Then add a loop cut along the length of the cube. And we can go for 8 cuts on this side. Now, we would like to make some horizontal loop cuts as well. Let us make three such cuts along the height. So, all three dimensions are covered, and these cuts will play two different roles. First, we'll remove this bottom portion of the cart. Let us zoom in and deselect everything. Now select only these edges. Leave this last one, no need to select it. Let us then continue our selection along the bottom section of the cart. Now on the other side, we'll select these. And remember that we have to leave this one. Now hit X on your keyboard, and select edges, to remove this section entirely. So the basic shape of the cart is ready. We have to now add a solid surface for this bottom part which is currently an open end. We need to cover it with a face, so let us select these edges together like this. We can easily add a new face for this selected edges, from the menu option which is called new face. But the problem with this is, you won't be able to use loop cut for this, because there are many vertices on each side of this, so it is an end gone. Let us undo whatever we have done. What we'll do instead is, we will make a duplicate copy of these vertices, and create a new face from that duplicate set, and later we'll weld that face with the rest of the mesh. So while the vertices are selected here, you can either use Shift-D to duplicate them, or you can go to the Mesh menu and select Duplicate. So we will get a duplicate set of the selected vertices. Just press the Escape key, and it will be placed in the same original location. Now go to the Vertex menu and create a new face. Then hit X to bring the Delete menu and select Limited Dissolve. 
So all the internal vertices will be removed for this plane, only the four corners will remain. We can now use the loop cut, so select the loop cut tool, and let us create a loop cut along the width. Let us change the number of cuts to 6. And on the other side, the number of cuts should be 8, to match it with the rest of our model. So we are almost done with this editing. In the next step, we'll extrude 4 such vertices on the bottom part, we'll later add the wheels on these extended sections. So select this vertex. And this vertex as well. Now press E to extrude, then press Y, and type 0 .08 and enter. We have to do the same thing on the other side as well. So, select these two vertices together, then extrude them in the Y direction, by 0 .08, like before. Now, we have to ensure that there are no duplicate vertices, and all the parts are connected as a single mesh. So press A to select all. Then go to the Mesh menu, and under Merge, select Merge by Distance. We can see that some vertices are removed. It will remove the duplicate vertices, and join all the loose parts together. Now hit X again, and select only faces. So all the faces will be removed, leaving only the edges and the vertices. Let us select everything, and turn on the edge selection. So we got a skeleton for the shopping cart. In the next step, we'll convert this into a curve object, and add some thickness to these edges. But if we directly convert it to a curve, it may contain some wrong geometry, which will create issues in the later steps. So we won't do that, we'll first break it into two different parts. These horizontal rings of the cart will constitute one part or one object, and the rest of the parts will be in another object, and later we'll join them together. Let us select the first ring at the top. Then we'll move to the next one, but we will go a little fast. Our aim is to avoid overlapping edges in one curve, because later, those can be the source of errors. So we selected all the horizontal rings, now go to the mesh menu. Then under separate, select separate by selection. Now you can see that this selected part of the cart, is converted into a separate object, so we have two objects. Let us go back to the object mode. Select this first object, then go to the object menu, and under convert, select the curve option. So you can see that this icon has changed to a curve. Similarly for the second object, we'll do the same thing and convert it also to a curve. Now go to the add menu, and under curve, add a bezier circle. This will control the width of these wires. So let us resize this circle, to 0.015. It'll look like a very tiny circle, but that is sufficient for our purpose. Let us select this first object, which is now converted to a curve. Then go to this curve tab. Scroll down, and then expand this geometry section. Under the section called bevel, switch over to the object tab, and in the object field, select the bezier circle. So you can see that a nice thickness is added to this. Now select the second curve object. Go to the Object tab like before, and select the Bezier Circle. Then select the curves together. Go to the Object menu, and select Join to join the two curves. Then again go to the Object menu, and under Convert, let us convert it to a mesh. We can now delete the Bezier Circle, since it is no longer needed. And we can rename this cube to a meaningful name, like Cart. So our shopping cart is somewhat ready, but we are not done yet. We need to add some suitable materials, and the wheels. Let us first add the wheels here. So go to the Add menu, and we have to add one, Taurus. Then open this operator box, and change the major radius to 0.25, and the minor radius to 0.05. Let us also change the minor segments to 24. We can actually hide our cart object for the time being. We need to rotate this Taurus to make it upright. So in the object properties, change the X rotation to 90 degrees. We just got our tube, now we want to add here a solid surface, which will form the disc of the wheel. So let us go to the edit mode, and turn on the vertex selection. Deselect everything, and select two vertices from an inner circle, like this. Under the select menu, select the edge loops. Then from the vertex menu, create a new face for these vertices. Similarly on the other side, select two vertices, and then select the entire loop through the edge loops option. And create a new face for them as well. 
So we got two plates or two discs created for our wheel. Let us go back to the object mode. We can bring back the cart. We need to place the wheel in its correct position. So let us pick up the move tool and move it to the front side and down as well, right on the projected part that we created for the wheels. It needs little fine tuning, but we already know the exact values, so let us directly change it here. We'll go for 0.78 in the X, then 1.1 in the Y, and just minus 1 in the Z. Let us verify it once. It looks somewhat oversized for the cart, so we can reduce its size a little bit. Maybe to 0.8. That looks perfect. Now we'll make some linked copies of this wheel and place them at the three other corners. So press Alt-D on your keyboard to make a copy of this wheel. Since we used Alt-D, it will be a linked copy. Let's move it to the back side. We can directly enter the correct value in the X, 0.78. Similarly, we have to make two more copies and place them to the other side of the cart. Linked copies are very helpful when you create similar items, like the wheels of a car, or maybe the legs of a chair. Later you can easily change the design for any one wheel, and it will reflect equally on all other copies. It's very useful, so we have covered this linked copy thoroughly in another tutorial, the link is given below in case you're interested to know more. Let us now select all the wheels together, keeping the shift key pressed. And then select the cart, it's important that the cart is selected last. Then press Ctrl P, and select the object option here. This will make the cart apparent for the wheels, so they will always move together with the cart. Let us move the cart slightly upward to place the wheels right on the ground plane. Press 1 to go to the front view, and we'll adjust the Z location of the cart. The wheels are also moving with the cart. Let us directly enter, 1.24. We already discovered this value beforehand through trial and error. Now, we want the wheels to also rotate when the cart makes a movement. It's not sufficient for the wheels to just move with the cart, we have to also animate their rotation angle, which will be this Y rotation angle. So right-click on this, and click on Add Driver. Then in this object field, select our cart object. Let us keep this type field as X location. And in this expression field, we have to write the actual formula. It should be var or variable, multiplied by 25, and divided by 3.14, which is the value of pi. This value of 25 can change, it depends on the actual dimensions of the object. It is just perfect for the dimensions of this model. You may get a warning like this when you add a driver for the first time, you have to just allow the execution. We have to now copy this driver, and then paste it for all other wheels. Drivers are very interesting, you can build a relation between multiple objects and their properties through drivers. We'll do a detailed tutorial on this later, but it is not very difficult, if you have ever used formulas in Excel, it is quite similar to that. We'll now move the cart and verify how the wheels move with the cart. Let us first disable the highlighting part, so that we can easily see the objects. And let us set our viewport closer to the wheels, we want to see their movement. So as we are moving this cart, you can see how the wheels are rolling or rotating. We are moving the cart only in the X direction, because the wheels are parallel to the X axis, and our drivers are set up only for X. We can also add drivers for turning of the wheels when the cart changes its direction of movement, but it needs little more complex formula. We'll discuss that later when we do the modeling of cars. So we are almost done with this. Let us move the cart back to its original position. We'll now add a handle for our cart and some suitable materials, so go to the Add menu and add a cylinder. Let us again enable the highlighting option in the viewport. Now resize the cylinder by a factor of 0.07 in X and Y. And the X rotation angle should be 90, so that the handle becomes horizontal. We have to then move it here, so pick up the Move tool. And then go to the Front View mode. Let us grab it and move it to the correct position. We have to place it precisely at this point. So the X location should be 2.1. The Y location should be 0. And the Z location should be 2.74, it is already known to us beforehand. We can slightly reduce the length of this handle. Let us go for a factor of 0.9 for the length. And while the handle is selected, press the Shift key, select the cart, and press Ctrl P. 
Then select this object option, so that the handle becomes a child of the cart object. It will then move along with the cart, just like the wheels. So our modeling part is done, we'll now add some basic materials. Let us turn on the material view mode, and then select the cart. Go to the materials tab and create a new material. We are good to go with this default material, but we'll just change the metallic value to 1. And we'll also change the roughness to 0 0.2. This will give us a material that looks like steel material. Now, select the handle part, and create a new material here, like before. You can change this base color to whatever you like, maybe some shade of cyan, with a dark tone. Let us then select any one wheel. We need two different materials to be created for the wheels, because this outer ring where the tube should be in black color, and the plate will have some other color. Let's create a new material. We need a black color for this, so we have to reduce this value field to zero. Now, we have to add the second material here, which will be applied only on the inner plate. Let us go to the edit mode, and turn on the face selection. Then select this face. And add a new entry, in this material list. Then create a new material. Let us change the base color, maybe to red. And for a plastic look, we can use a subsurface, with the same red color, and then increase the subsurface value. Now go upward, and click on a sign, so the red material will be applied on this face. In the same way, select the other plate, then select the red material and click on a sign. So we got the red material applied on both sides of the wheel, and all other wheels are also updated since they are linked copies, so they share the same mesh data and the same material. Finally, we are ready with the shopping cart. You can now add some more fancy things to the cart, maybe you can attach a company logo, and you can use rigid body physics to put any item inside the cart. We have added our channel name, and created a moving cart like this. So that's all for today. I hope you like this easy modeling tutorial for the beginners. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.